Now what we're going to do is show a tying technique using a piece of fluffy fur. I believe this is Russian sable. Don't have it marked, but it's got a very long, dense under fur and then very few guard hairs. But these mid hairs are very fine and then a very fluffy bottom hair. So when I take my clip, I can design the look and taper of my fly by spinning it out and looking at the shape. So it's got only a few fibers here, and then it starts dense. I can grab those few fibers and pull them to make that midsection longer. And now that gives me a finished fly that has a different taper than the stock fly did. So now I have a very thick front end. I have a piece back here that will segment nicely. And then I have tail fibers. What I can also do, I've prepared this one, is mix a little bit of flash in the front so that when I do my throw out, I'm having to handle the material. And every time I push my fingers down, I push the material down with it. But if I want to keep the material fluffy and quickly finish my rope, I can use a material pliers, put it on there like so, and spin it. This quickly finishes the rope, keeps me from having to put my fingers all over the dubbing, and it gives me the look that I want. So now I have my tail fibers, I have a fine back end that I can create my segments, and I have a thick, fluffy front end with sparkle ice dub that I can finish off the fly with. So as I go forward, now I finish the thorax with my sparkle dubbing and I have the completed fly. Notice many times I finish hide. When you start the fly you can put lead underneath to weight it, you can put a bead up in front, but wherever you design the fly your rope dub applies the material to give you your finished look. So now I have a tail, I have a segmented back end, and I have a fluffy front end that I can pick out to the desired amount, all in one. Here we have another good example how the rope dub can vary a certain type of fur to look different ways. I have a piece of Australian possum, very kinky, very dense, very fluffy, but very soft to the touch. And it would move a lot, so this would be more for a stonefly pattern. And then, just to see how it would look, I left the entire fly fluffy just by rope dubbing it, leaving all the tips sticking out. We have a very fluffy fly that I could use for shrimp patterns, crawfish, and the like by shaping the fly. Now let's work with badger hair. If you'll notice, it's got a lot of long guard fibers and then a very dense underbody. So instead of blending this, let's work with it straight off the hide so the qualities of the material as they grow gives us our dubbing capabilities. Notice we've got long guard hairs. We can use those for tail, for segmentation. And then this portion up here, we don't have it quite so dense. We can use it for the underbody of the front end of our fly. So fundamentally, fundamentally we get a taper effect that we can work to our good. So I'm going to use the tail fibers from the guard hairs to make the back end of my fly. And then I'm going to bring this around and start roping the front segmentation. And as you get more practice, you'll watch how this forms and create the look that you want as it comes from the, the hook outward. So now I've roped, I've got my material tight, I've ended up with a fluffy body up front. I bring my material over and I start my dub towards the front. And as you, you see my segmentation, as I get to the front end of the fly, I have my fluffy thorax and I finish the fly off. I have a very buggy looking start for a stonefly. Add eyes, wing casing, legs, clean it up a little bit. And with the raw fur right off the hide, I have a back end of a fly. Final segment of this video, we're going to be doing 
synthetic seal. One of the things tires find about synthetic seal when they try to dub it, it's very unruly, kind of does what it wants to do, flies apart, and it's very, very difficult to get shape. As you'll see from these two flies, depending upon how you tie with the rope dub, the back end on this fly is body, and then we have a picked out full body that you would use on a salmon fly or a steelhead pattern. I'll go ahead and show you how to attach seal fur. So it's a synthetic, natural will be the same way. Notice that it's very easy to pull the fibers apart. They don't want to stay together. So we'll just grab a group of them and without handling them too much, find a few fibers that we can tie down. Once it's tied down, we can use the thread as the base to keep all the fibers gathered. Notice as I start to spin, these fibers actually want to stay separated. Very hard to get synthetic seal to stay together and that's why it doesn't work very good even in dubbing loops. But as I use my fingers to regather the material, keep spinning, you'll see that it's gathered to the hook and it works its way out away from the hook in a rope as it slowly tightens and becomes a rope dub. Now I can speed this process up once it gets started by using my material tool like so and then spin it out. As long as I have my anchor as this starts to spin it's not spinning the thread it's only spinning the material and it'll tighten that up pretty quick. You'll see how tight that is. Now I move the material up and down the thread where I want it. I have the density of the fly any taper that I want and I have it picked out as much or as little as I want and as I wrap forward it gets one wrap tighter each time I go around and you'll see notice I have a bead head on this fly and I finish up behind the bead with a whip finish I can either use a tool or by hand If I wanted multicolors, I would just stack the colors as I did. Pull out the few loose fibers that they are, but notice there's only that much came out. The rest is really tight and it's not going to come out of there. There I have a dense seal fur dub fly and by changing the way you apply this, the dubbing to the thread, you can get the different looks as we saw before. Here is the same type of fly finished with a tail segmented back end, a fluffy thorax, and if I come back and finish the fly, I can put my eyes, whatever legs I want, and wing casing, do the flashback if I want, and have the finished fly with a segmented back end and underbody all tied with the rope dub. Now if we carry that to the nth degree, you can see that I have this fly roped for the tail. I have biots for the tail fibers. Then for the segmented or for the front end of the body, I have my biots for legs. I have shiny wing casing, eyes. And the original method for the rope dub was developed in order to get dubbing underneath the wing pieces continually in short strands, adding dubbing to dubbing till I work my way around the wings and legs to create the thorax portion of the fly up front. That fly there is quite old and that's method started decades ago. Here we have another more recent stone fly using the ice dub. Here I have a overwrap with a tag end segmentation and then a newer pearlescent material and ice dub for the front end and the graduated colors going from a light back end to orange to brown to show how the colors can be graduated.